Amazing rights. Well, hashtag we owe our success. Hashtag she owns her success. A warm welcome, especially for those eyes that have just joined us. We've had a remarkable afternoon so far. Last year, we started with hashtag no apology for success. And the reason I keep referring to it is because if you haven't journeyed with momentum and you haven't seen the remarkable work that people have been doing within themselves and within their businesses and also owning their success, go and look for that hashtag and follow the journey. It has been amazing. Well, it brings us to this as we're owning our success, and I promised you a sisterhood conversation. So all of our sisters, thanks for your comments so far. We really appreciate you taking part. We're shaking things up, making strides and shattering barriers. The word alone, I think, is really painful when you think about it. And I want to introduce you to our Sisterhood Success Stories panel. So Sarah Jane, I'm going to start with you. Sarah Jane Bowden, founder of the Soul Providers Collective. She's also known as SJ. It's wonderful to see you here. I've got so many questions about being employed, starting your own business, being a mum and doing all of this. And then I do this, Lana. Wow, wow, yeah! <laughs> There's no audience. I'm your audience, don't worry. I'll be a good We have like three people, and, <laughs> and they're all really handsome men. Yes. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> then we've also got Ndoni Mkunu, founder and CEO of Black Women in Science, winner of a Mandela Fellowship, and a doctor in philosophy. Now, I have to say, the reason I call you doctor already is because mm. she's handing in a PhD. Now, she's earning her success. <laughs> yeah! No pressure. <laughs> Tony. You have you own it already. Yes. You yes. don't need to hand it in. No, hand it in. Yeah. <laughs> Momentum says you got it. Yeah. <laughs> You've got it. See, she's also not so she's got the W. Yeah. Momentum. Yeah. Momentum. You're in. You're in. That. <laughs> Karen Williams, founder of the Throne Agency. It's mm. wonderful to see you. Thank you so much. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the audience goes. <laughs> Nonto, Karen's baby is at home. Six months. No way. Exactly. Yeah. With that, enough. I'm, like, I mean, I wish people could see. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. In Afrikaans, we say plunk, which means. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you. You guys are so kind. You Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations on the baby. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And then, Nontokozo Madonsela, it's wonderful to know you in leadership. It's wonderful to know you as part of Momentum and Momentum. Thanks for having the courage to literally climb that ladder in front of the building and turning <laughs> that M to a W it for all so of us. It is so heavy, that M. <laughs> <laughs> Our fierce marketer from Momentum Metropolitan, Nontokozo Madonsela, it's wonderful to have you back in a chair. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> now, in a while, we'll also have Esther Wachiski join us all the way from San Francisco. Your questions will be asked to her, and then hopefully we have a winning question that wins her book, uh, How to Raise Successful People. Now, to get this conversation started earlier, we mentioned barriers. Mm. We mentioned everything from not being able to ask for a raise. We talked about starting out and starting out the confidence to know that you can own your success. Nonto and I, we discussed a whole journey of the past year and how self-work is probably the hardest work, but it has to be done in order to get somewhere, right? Mm. So I want to know from you guys, what, what was the one barrier, or maybe there's many, that mm. stood in your way of your success? Sarah Jane, do you want to start? Yeah, I think uh, probably an easy answer. Um, I think patriarchy is one of the big uh, barriers in the sense that it can impact our self-belief. Mm. So I own the fact that a barrier for me was overcoming maybe the way the world mm. expected me to be or had expectations for me and working on that self-belief to kind of stand up and go, actually, no, guys, I'm coming. <laughs> and make space. <laughs> make space or I'll find space. space. Mm. Yeah. If you don't make it, I'll yeah. find it. Yeah. Um, and you kind of know there's something wrong while you're doing it. Um, so you've got to, that self-work is so important to mm -hmm. recognize that we have kind of, in many ways, been brought up to, to, to be our own worst enemies mm. sometimes. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Esther speaks about that a lot. She mm. speaks about how we were taught things as young girls mm. and how we believe it. Yeah. But before we even get there, I mean, mm. what stood in your way? You know, I really liked what Sarah just said, and it's, it's such a powerful thing. And it's because my barrier was actually myself, mm. in that a lot of the time when you talk about science and women and black women, there's such an attraction. Everybody wants you in the sector. And then you finally get into the sector, and then you feel like, oh, you know, um, I just discovered a word called imposter syndrome. Wow. Yes. And I think 
that is a deep thing that mm -hmm. you that can be a barrier for you to actually submit, for you to actually take the stage, yeah. for you to actually, um, you know, have the confidence to say that I belong here. And I think that's been my biggest barrier. And that overcoming mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. has been actually equipping myself with the skills that I need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imposter syndrome is real. Yeah. It's yeah. real. It it's a real, real thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very real. Yeah. Mm. Karen? For me, I think it's twofold. Um, so before I started my own company, I worked in advertising for a few years. And advertising in South Africa is still it's male dominated. Mm -hmm. um, it is white as well. It's very, very white. So being a black female in that space who's passionate, who's hungry, who's super hardworking, and who was trying to prove myself, um, I just, I, as Sarah mentioned, patriarchy was a big thing, and I just overcoming race as well was a very, very big thing. Mm -hmm. You're not respected, your voice isn't really heard, you're not given a space to really express yourself. So that was a big obstacle for me. Mm -hmm. um, since actually founding my own company, I'm, you know, my company's two and a half years old now, yes, and well I'm done. a new mom. I had a, mom's, <laughs> uh, I had a baby six months ago. So being an entrepreneur and dealing with the demands of work and the demands of being a first-time mother and having a baby who needs you all the time mm. is a challenge that I, I don't think I was prepared for. So mm. just navigating those two worlds yeah. is just, it's yeah. such an incredible challenge and yeah. I'm still mm. yeah, trying to find the balance between the two. Yeah. So the one thing I want to tell you, do not be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I had my kids, my first, especially with my first one who's now 15, I would take him to my sister's place and be like, this weekend, mm. I need to sleep. Yeah. I need to go do my hair. <laughs> and I just need to watch whatever movie I feel like yeah. watching. And my sisters were so good to me. That's amazing. But it's because I asked. Yeah, and yeah. there were times I would phone my mom and be like, what are you up to? Please come. I want to host you for a week. Completely. So that I can just feel like I have the time. And yeah. I talk about being selfish with your time as well as a mother. Wow. Um, anyway, so, but yes, ask for help. No, thank and you use for the that. Because yeah. yeah. I think sometimes the idea is that oh, you're supposed to handle everything by yeah. yourself. You're weak yeah. if you can't. Yeah. And I mean, it's a transitional mm -hmm. period. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I think I'll definitely take that advice. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I like the word balance that you just used. And mm. I mean, I use that word very loosely because I don't think there is any balance. And Nanta, I want to ask you this. She mentioned balance. She mentioned barrier. Mm. Funny that they start with Bs, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have had many barriers in your life. Mm. But that's because mm. I know your story. Mm. And I'm encouraged by your story because mm. hashtag look at it now. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah. my new hashtag. Yes. Hashtag look at it now. <laughs> so, so if you could encourage, especially our young women, our first time mom, mm. I, you're not a mommy yet, but you will be one day. And, and Sarah's got children as well. Mm. So do I. If you can encourage us as someone who done it all, Nonto. Mm. You've, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't yeah. not own your success yes, now. Okay. Yeah. You have. Because yes, 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 your yes. children are older. Yeah, they are. And, and you're in leadership. Yeah. You're in leadership. You're in the boardroom. Yeah. We present to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? The question Advice? is, yes, how cool. did you do it? How do I do it? Barry and balance. Okay. Mm. <laughs> well, the concept of balance doesn't exist. It doesn't. Sure. No. Mm. I say that now. I thought it did. I, I looked sure. for it. I tried to achieve <laughs> it. It was it never arrived. Mm. <laughs> the package didn't <laughs> arrive. <laughs> I didn't get it. Um, so what I do know now, Ilana, is that if balance doesn't exist, it's okay that there is a window when work dominates. Mm. But be aware that you are making that choice. Mm. It's okay when kids dominate. It's okay when, because you are not your kids. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think if it's family, we are, like family is me. No, mm -hmm. because then that's where you start to forget who you are, yeah. mm -hmm. to not give yourself the things that feed your soul. So I'm very clear that there's kids and then there's me. Mm -hmm. And be okay that there are moments where you will send the kids away. Oh, you will indeed. ask your mm. a babysitter or your au pairs to mm. support the kids. Yeah, right. um, and allow yourself that freedom. And do not, you know, Ian Lavanzant talks about forgiving yourself. Mm. She mm. says, forgive yourself for expecting life to be perfect. Right. Mm. Forgive yourself for expecting sure. your parenting to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Forgive yourself for expecting to be loved. Wow. For, for, you, you know, that yes. you, because you put that expectation on mm. yourself. Mm. And I think for me, it's, it's, it's that situation of just balance doesn't exist. Mm. And then the other thing is that for me, the, one of the barriers, especially in business, I mean, SJ knows my salon in mm. Parkhurst, which I've subsequently sold. 
um, called Spa 88, right next to Express. So if people who know Parkhurst and Fourth Avenue, I was right there in the middle of the streets. Mm. The thing, because I was in there full time, my clients didn't know mm. that the business was owned by a black woman. And excellence mm. is how my brand was. Mm. And it was always amazing when people see a black woman and excellence, there's like a double take, like, whoa, yeah, yeah. Christ is doing this. Okay. You, you, you've been it told that. Like, mm. is, is, it, is it all you? Yeah. Yeah. Is it all sure. yours? Right. I get that when I drive my fancy you? cars. Come yeah. yeah. <laughs> they always yeah. like, did he buy it's them? And I'm me. like, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, like people just, this idea of a woman is excellent mm. and polished mm. and, mm. and has standards and they are not compromising sure. wow. is sometimes some, you know, a barrier we've got to get over. Yeah. Sure. Mm. If you just joined in, we Talking barriers, hashtag she owns her success. Yes, mm. welcome to Women's and Sarah. Mm. I want to know, I want to mm. know, I want to know. We're talking balance and barriers. So mm. you were employed once. Mm. What made you decide? I, I almost want to say employment could have been a barrier for you because you decided to start your own business. Mm -hmm. What, what pushed you to become an entrepreneur? And when I say this, I want to mm. say that not everyone can be an entrepreneur, mm. and it's okay <laughs> to be employed because we can also be best working with and for someone? Mm. So yeah, I think one of the challenges we have with the idea of entrepreneurship is that it's over glamorized. Mm. So if you ask most entrepreneurs when they started, I don't think we started going, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. Mm. In my case, I had a baby <laughs> and I wanted some <laughs> yeah. spare time. Uh, in my career when I was employed, I always wanted to be a freelancer. I was never attached to the idea of having a permanent job. Mm. So I guess success, when you think about success, what makes success? Maybe timing, talent, hard work, privilege, social capital, etc. All those things kind of lined up for me. And then I became an entrepreneur. But I didn't start going, okay, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I started going, I want to be in charge of my own time. Mm -hmm. I want to be... I want to own projects. I want to have an agency that speaks to the broadest sector of society, etc. So there were other reasons for starting, mm. and then I became an entrepreneur. Mm. So I have so many questions. Right? How, how do you? And this is for you. How mm. do you trust that I have studied, I have done, I've achieved? Because you're meeting with ministers anyway, you know? <laughs> what more do you need? <laughs> right? Yeah. But then you, you say, I'm going to trust myself enough to also study further and submit a PhD. Mm. Like, how do you... how do Because you, I'm, I'm terrified of failure, right? Mm. Mm. I think my barrier would be the, the idea of wanting to fail. Mm. Uh, how do you push yourself to that point where you go, mm. I'm going to submit? Yeah. Um, you know... I loved um, the response of excellence. I love the response of equipping yourself with the right skills and the right, you know, whether I, if I want to do my PhD, I need to submit my master's. If I want to mm. do my PhD, I have to submit, you know, over a period of time to my supervisor to keep getting that reassurance. So, I mean, I want to, I want to make it a, you know, a spiritual thing of, you know, you have to believe in yourself <laughs> and you have it within you. But I'm going to be honest and say, you need to get the skills. You need to put yeah. your head down and you need to put in the time. Yeah. And that is the way in which you also gain confidence in that, you know, it might not be 100%, but it, if you, you can work with 20% and mm -hmm. say, you know what, I believe that, uh, you know, I got some kind of response from my supervisor. It came back very bad and negative, but I got a response. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, this is complete nonsense, mm -hmm. throw it in the bin, you know. So it, it takes a lot of in introspective work, if you know that's the work, and also developing the skills. What are the skills I need to do? How mm. do I write better? Mm. How do I communicate better? Mm. How do I author with the right international organizations? And that is the way that you actually, you know, build your confidence. Mm. Skill, skill, skill. She said international. Did you hear yeah, that? I no. love that. She didn't say local, <laughs> like, like <laughs> neighbor. <Love> no, <laughs> she said international. That's amazing. Nonto, how does one deal with negativity? Because not all of our bosses sure. like what we submit or how we want to become. Sure. When she said supervisor, I cringed. Mm. I could feel how I didn't mm. submit my yeah. PhD and ran away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah. you know, sometimes we also have to take into account that criticism is there to sometimes build us. But yeah. what if mm. I don't want that? Yeah. So, so you know, I, I, I was saying to someone recently that, uh, because, because I mean, obviously my profession is marketing. Mm. Marketing is the most public sure. yeah. <laughs> job uh, yeah. in terms of our outcomes yeah. and our deliverables. And I sometimes joke in the boardroom and I say mm. to my peers that actually, you know, I, I mean, 
accountants forgive me. But I often say, whoever is an accountant, I'm sorry. I was married to one. <laughs> now I'm no longer. <laughs> Going for therapy. I'm going for therapy. But, uh, but the thing is, if somebody makes a mistake on an Excel sheet, like only two people will know mm. that the formula was not yeah. right. But God, if the campaign mm. is not right, mm. sure. like South mm. Africa will know, yeah. the world will yeah. know. Get it? One sure. error in language, in a post. <laughs> sure. Like you don't sleep. Yeah. Like, so that just that is huge. And then when you do, you deliver work and and you know the, whoever is a senior person in the organization, like yeah, I didn't quite like it. Oh dear. Yeah, my <laughs> wife doesn't think it's yeah. nice. <laughs> or the, my kids are on YouTube. Why aren't we on YouTube? <laughs> then you're going to be like. I hear you. Yeah. Mm. So let's just unpack that a mm. little bit. So criticism is hard. But what I also know is that for me, it pushes me to get my story straight, mm. to get my argument straight, to get my logic straight. And I say to my team, always go to sleep knowing the reason why you made the decision. Wow. Mm. Go to sleep knowing, you know, if somebody says, why these flowers? Coralia. And the team will say, <laughs> these flowers we decided on because of that. Why was Elena the host? We can explain. <laughs> we have yeah. the logic. Why did we have this panel? Mm. Because sometimes we make things because they're cool and whatever. But, but when you are faced with criticism, mm. often people just want to understand how did you get to that decision? Sure. And sometimes personal preferences and taste, guys. Mm. Yeah. Creativity I mean, I will bake a cake, you will like it, and SJ will hate it. Yeah. It's SJ. fine. It's <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Not a cake, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think we, we shouldn't expect our ideas to be loved by everybody. Mm. Recently, I, we felt, we know, we got some feedback that said some of the things went right, and I said, it's fine. Some of the best movies mm. are not liked by people. Mm. Some of the best movies mm. we will enjoy, and somebody else will be like, you know, Jam that James Bond wasn't great. Mm. It's okay. Mm. Don't you think we also, we need to question how we have this idea of failure. Mm. Um, sure. Be such an influence on us mm. as women, yeah. especially. Mm. Like, we need to almost let the air out mm. yeah. and yeah. remove the word completely yeah. Yeah. because yeah. what is failure? Yeah. And isn't it just learning or relearning mm. and lessons? Or oh, an attempt made to um, make another attempt. Exactly. Yeah. You know? mm. And who's judging? Yeah. Mm. That's the other question. Yeah. Like, who are we failing? For, According for, to his or, mark. Yeah, yeah, according, yeah. To, yeah. according to who. Mm. I've had to let go of worrying about yeah. failure. I love this so much. How do you, you said uh, deflate. How, yeah, how did deflate. you say it? Pull out the plug. I love pulling yeah. out the plug of failure, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what does it for you? Where does that switch happen? Mm. How do you get to a point where you go, it's not me, it's you? <laughs> <laughs> Sure, I don't know. I just think that if, we, if we're always thinking about how we might fail or who we might let down, and sometimes mm. that's the way we've been socialized or brought mm. up in our cultures and yes. our communities, we won't get anywhere. Mm. We'll always be too afraid to mm. take that risk or take mm. that next step. So mm. I think we just, we just need to stop talking about failure and fearing failure and maybe embracing it. Mm. Um, I, uh, personally, we had a rough year, financial year in our business, it was the best thing that happened to us. Wow. So mm. some people might say, oh, you know, shame, they, they ran at a loss that year. But for us, it made us go and revisit. And I think a lot of nice. entrepreneurs are going through that mm. right now. Mm. Um, during COVID, there's a lot of people who are feeling very lost and like they failed their families, they failed their staff. Mm. It's not, it's, there's no textbook mm. for how to do it right. So let's just let go of failure yeah. and see it as learning. That would be my take on it. When mm. you said that, I could feel me ex exhale. Mm. <laughs> I could feel mm. like there's a hundred of us doing it all at mm. the same mm. time. Yeah. Karen, for you, I'm, I'm interested in the fact that you were with an agency and you went on to start your own. Mm. And immediately that word failure could pop up far away because it's no longer part of your life because you are successful. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately I'm thinking you were part of an organization or a company and now you go on and you're doing something just better. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I was at agency and I work in advertising and marketing as well, <laughs> um, so I understand the challenges that she speaks of. Um, and I just felt, again, I was super, super passionate. I was super hardworking. And I just felt that I had reached the ceiling of what I could do within that space. Mm, and sure. I needed to be in a new environment that it would actually facilitate the growth or nurture my growth, um, I think, as a person, as an entrepreneur. 
And that's why I, I started my agency. Um, I think the idea of failure is something, well, maybe started with success or my definition of success mm -hmm. and really interrogating sure. what that meant to mm -hmm. me. Um, you know, I kind of just worshipped a lot of entrepreneurs. And one thing they spoke about a lot of the time was that you have to define what success mm -hmm. is to you, what it means to you, mm -hmm. and not this prepackaged idea of mm -hmm. this is what success is. And I think if your starting point is defining success for yourself, mm -hmm. it's much easier to navigate mm -hmm. what failure is mm -hmm. or reframe yeah. what failure is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, yeah, I think it then changes your relationship mm -hmm. with that. Because so. mm -hmm. it's so different for all of us, right? 100%. Mm -hmm. If you just joined in, hashtag she owns her success. Karen Williams speaking. And if you want to, yeah, you should Google her. Founder <laughs> of the Throne yes. Agency. Love the name of the I agency. Know. Do you Thank know what her son is? Can we say her son's oh. name? Absolutely. Can absolutely. Love yes. Her son's name is, wait for it. King. King. Yeah. <laughs> and can I tell you a tiny, just yes, I'm like the on. universe back. So I registered the business on the 22nd of Feb in 2018, and my son was born on the exact same day <gasps> two years ago. And oh. I was like, I'm finished. I'm finished. I finished. Is beautiful. Completely. Oh, is is he so named this? So he's King Williams? Uh huh. That's wow. so cool. <laughs> Baby King. I love yeah. King William. Baby King. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, Who are you wearing, King William? <laughs> <laughs> I have this King William's dress. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you believe me for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to introduce you to the other guests as well. If you just joined in, Sarah Jane is next to me. Sarah Jane Bowden, founder of the Soul Providers Collective. The reason I'm saying it slowly is because last night on LinkedIn, I was on all their profiles and it's so glossy and beautiful to see. <laughs> like, it's wonderful if we want to be like other people, right? So go, yeah. go and look and, and see what they're about. Ndoni Nkruni, Nkrunu. Founder and CEO of Black Women in Science, winner of a Mandela Fellowship and also a Doctor of Philosophy. She's ending in a PhD tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I love oh, sorry, in one week, no. two weeks, three weeks from now. Soon. Next Soon. month. Yes. She Soon. earns her success. Yes. Barriers is the one thing we're talking about. And I mean, there were so many when I looked at the list earlier, earlier this mm. afternoon when we started, there were things like motherhood or how, how do you ask for a raise? Um, I don't have anyone to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the mirror. Like, okay. So I do have one for you. Yes. As an entrepreneur yes. and as someone who pays the salaries, yeah. COVID hits or even non-COVID hits, yeah. there's two principles. The one says pay yourself first. The other one says pay your staff first. Who do you pay first? Staff, ops. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess it depends on what kind of entrepreneur you are. But I've always paid my staff first, wow. um, and always paid myself last. I think cash flow, <laughs> cash flow can complicate <laughs> situations. Um, but yeah, always staff first. Just, just an insight, and I mean, I'm asking you about your business, and you mm. don't have to answer it. Be be sure. When COVID came, mm. were you all registered for UIF? So this is quite interesting. We are one of the rare agencies that have grown during lockdown, yeah. and during COVID. Um, but yes, because we have been running for nine years, so all that stuff is hopefully mm. on track. But no, we've actually success. hired mm. people rather yeah. than let people go. So yeah, we've been very lucky. Great mm. team, great mm. clients. Mm. So yeah. That's Amazing. nice. Do you yeah. want to do a shout out to your clients? Is <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that. <laughs> you were so shout convinced. Out. I was like, <laughs> shout out to yeah. my clients, my clients, my team, my friends. I was yeah. like, my I family. also want to be part of the sole providers. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was really a proud moment. Um, mm. I was saying the other day, you know, at this stage of the financial year, you've got to check how you're doing. Yeah. Mm. And actually, we were profitable. And for the first time ever, I was happy to go pay that tax. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> because provisional tax is due yes. tomorrow. And normally, you're like, damn this, you yeah. know, can we write it off? What can we yeah. do? Mm. And yeah, so we've just been Lock very, book. very lucky. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I hear you. Okay. So yeah, very lucky with that. What else would you say is a barrier for you? Take me back to growing up. I mean, mm. we, we shared the story earlier of paying for our, our tuition and, mm. and going to university. Mm. And it's different for both of us. My dad conned me into believe that I'm studying on a bursary, right? Mm. And then the day after, literally a week later, after I graduated, I received a letter saying, time to pay off the loan. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. what? Oh. So oh, yeah. dad, I love you. And thanks yeah. for doing that because it taught me a lot of lessons, mm. right? But was anything like that something for you that was a barrier? Um, I'm going to ask Esther Wojcicki the same question because for her it was poverty. Mm. She grew as a white woman, it was mm. as a white Jew, she grew up poor and mm. that was a barrier mm. for her. Mm. What was it like for you? Mm. 
Financial strain when you get into academia is something that really needs to be discussed in our country. Um, it's not sustainable, what's going mm -hmm. on. The models that are designed for your postgraduate studies, your undergraduate studies, are not models that were designed for a black person coming from a background that they need to support their family wow. and support the people in front of us. Mm. I don't know who designed them, I don't know how they designed them, but there needs to be an mm. honest conversation there mm. about, about financial um, mm. constraints and you face them, you mm. know. Um, for you as an undergraduate student to get um, a bursary, I think you need to be like the top 1% mm. and where you start getting a bit of a flexible, you know, um, you know access to funding is at your postgraduate level. And that's tricky because people leave then mm. and say, this is too much, I need a job. Mm. So mm. there needs to be different yeah. a conversation mm. around what we're doing there. But another, another challenge barrier that was very strong for me was there's this topic going around with academia, professorship, and it's around the leaking pipeline where we, us as women are leaving the system, mm. us as mm. black academics are leaving the system. And that's, that's something that is a challenge. And, and what feeds into that is the barrier of mentorship, the barrier of advice, the barrier of who can I look at that can advise me if I'm actually making the right decision by staying. Mm. And I think that's, that's one of my major challenges. Mm. Sure. Thanks for your honesty, because there's a lot of our MBA students listening, you know, mm -hmm. they, they're ready to, to do this and to be mm -hmm. called graduates. Mm -hmm. And it's a barrier, it's a struggle, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Nonta, when you were studying mm -hmm. and, and when you were changing jobs, mm -hmm. what was the hardest thing? Because you've, this is not the first organization that you've had yeah. leadership in. Mm -hmm. What was it like moving from one company to another? Mm -hmm. Is there no... Is there something that stands in your way mm -hmm. when you leave one organization to another because you're adopting yeah. and living another brand? Yeah. So <laughs> um, there, are, there are a lot of things that stand in the way. I think one of the big ones is the existing relationships and circles um, in organizations. So I come from the FMCG background, so Coca-Cola, British American Tobacco, SA Breweries, and the culture in FMCG around just organizational culture, but also marketing is very different. Mm. In financial services, and in FMCG, actually there's a, a far higher rotation of employees. Right. Um, and in financial services, I found that people tend to stay in their jobs longer. Mm. So when you're coming in at a senior level, you don't really, you are not known, you don't have relationships, mm. you don't have access. People know them, each other from when they first jobs to like <laughs> 15 years later. Um, so that for me was quite a, 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 a significant barrier. But I realized that knowing my story mm. and how delivering changes how people perceive me. Mm. Wow. And that's the ticket to the game. Um, in most financial services also, your title doesn't give you permission to change things or to lead. It's not oh. about your title. And I've noticed a lot of people who come expecting that their position and title mm -hmm. gives them permission mm -hmm. to lead, mm -hmm. they, they struggle. Yeah. Right. It's sure. about relationships. Mm -hmm. It's about the impact you make. It's about how strategic you are. But it's also about that place of, you know, the first 100 days when you do your job, I ask, when I interview, if anybody's going to be interviewed for a job by me, <laughs> here's a question you must expect. <laughs> no, true story. Um, <laughs> one of the questions I love asking is, what do you plan to do in your first 100 days? Oh. Wow. Sure. What do you plan to do. to do in your first 100 days? Mm. And often people, you know, think, I must come and move these flowers, change the counter, and that's not really how you start. When you, when you come in, you've got to hear, mm, sure. listen, yeah. mm. seek understanding, mm. Um, mm. and build a bridge with mm. people. Mm. So for me, when I started, you can ask my team, I had coffees, 30-minute coffees, with everyone in my team, oh. sure. from the most senior person to the most junior person. I also had coffees with leaders in the business, and my business manager was Charlotte, Oh, That's wow. where Charlotte and I met. Right. And Charlotte, oh, nice. and I, Charlotte mapped it out for me and said, okay, there are leaders, but then there are leaders. Right. <laughs> like the other time I said, Kuden Duna, Kuden Zinduna. <laughs> <laughs> There's Zinduna and Zinduna. So Charlotte <laughs> said that the, this layer, 
there are people you must know because that's where the work happens. Mm. That's where it, it, an ad or you know you owning your success. We say it here, but the execution and adoption of it happens here. Mm. So I think that when you're coming into a new organization, having that plan, pacing yourself, sure. building the bridge, mm. um, seeking understanding, know that you will be respected more when you deliver mm. is essential. Sure. Now, so far we, we've spoken about the education, the barriers around that, you know, new mom and also I'm so proud of you <laughs> leaving an agency and starting your own mm. even yours that it was this natural progression not easy natural mm. progression yes. into your own business how much does your little voice have to do with <laughs> <laughs> sorry Nonto I'm laughing because no Nonto is like we should call you queen affirmation <laughs> because Nonto's little voice is like an actual statue sitting on her, <laughs> her shoulder. You'll be like, what does your little voice say? And it will answer no. on her behalf. <laughs> How much does your little voice have to do with where you are at? Because even today, I had a conversation in business with someone and my gut said to me, uh -uh, don't go there. Mm -hmm. The last SMS I sent, mm -hmm. sent to someone before I arrived mm -hmm. here was a no. <laughs> mm -hmm. On something that mm -hmm. I just felt. Mm -hmm. Sarah? So I guess if the little voice is being used to vet or check on others and situations, it's probably quite healthy. I think imposter syndrome mm. is when the little voice starts mm. to sure. work on yourself. Mm. Right. And mm. I think that's where the little voice becomes more of a devil mm. than, a, than, a, mm. than an angel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so if, if you have struggled with um, self-belief and imposter syndrome, the little voice needs you know, to get pulled out and thrown away mm -hmm. because we can become our own worst mm -hmm. enemies. Mm -hmm. However, using it for intuition like mm -hmm. you did today, mm -hmm. I always go with gut feeling mm -hmm. nine times out of ten. ten yeah. mm -hmm. And I think it's so useful. So how do we tune into mm -hmm. the useful little voice mm -hmm. and just take out that mm -hmm. other voice and throw it away? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the challenge for me of mm -hmm. the little voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But Joe, there's only one, in yeah. case you were wondering. <laughs> I, I call it the angel whisper. The angel the whisper. The angel whisper. So my, my team, I've got moments where I'm like, um, you know what? There's the thing, the gut, mm. that says, mm, mm. the yes. right thing to do is this. Mm. Right. And, and I think we've got to trust ourselves. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Um, have you found the same thing? 100%, because mm. I, especially when I was younger, you mm. know, finding my feet in my career, not being too sure of myself, I used to doubt it a lot. But as I've grown, I mean, mm. I'm, I'm 31 today, actually. Oh so <laughs> Is it your birthday? Yes. Yes. It's my birthday today. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carol. Happy birthday to you. Oh, wow. Cheers. Listen, okay. I've got good news. So I want to introduce <laughs> yes, you. Got, we've got a gift. <laughs> These are the flowers <laughs> from Momentum. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Esther, which is on the line all the way from San Francisco. <laughs> We're going to be chatting to her. Hey, Esther. <laughs> Hi, Esther. We can't hear you. You're on mute. <laughs> so they're going to put, they're going to, I wish it's, this was a touch screen. Esther, they're going to put you live right now. Yeah, there we, we go. can hear you now. Now we can hear you. So just to fill you in, Esther Wachiski was one of our keynote speakers earlier. We talked about her new book, uh, How to Raise Successful People. You sent in your questions and now it's a time for her to answer them. So Esther, just to fill you in, we've got an amazing panel here with us. We've had insightful conversations about barriers, how to shatter them. We've even sung happy birthday because it's Karen's <laughs> birthday today. So we've got Karen, we've got Sarah and Donnie as well as Nonto Kozo here with us. But I'm going to go straight into our questions that we have for you today. One of the first ones says the following. It says, how did you trust your daughters as teenagers? This person says, my teen is 16, and when I trust him with his schoolwork and projects, he doesn't deliver. <laughs> Any advice? <laughs> you know, that's a very common question. Uh, it, they're not alone. A lot of people have that same issue. And so this is what I did with my daughters and it worked. So whenever they shared anything with me, whether it was bad or good or whatever, I never got upset. I never yelled at them. I never got mad. And so they felt comfortable sharing everything 
because the you know teenagers make a lot of mistakes all the time and so if you don't get mad at them and you don't do something to them like take away their keys or take away their cell phone or take oh. whatever uh, then they will share everything with you i think that problem is they're afraid to tell you so you no, just have to you no, this have is to quite be... useful yeah Go ahead, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry I interrupted you, Esther. We've got no, a one-second just... delay, but you can continue. Thanks. I just wanted to say it's, it is very useful and it works like a charm. <laughs> well, we're learning a lot and soon we'll also learn who our winner is of the book. You asked your questions and we're giving away that book. By the way, Esther, I bought the book this week. Great. Great attempt. No, I'm kidding. It was amazing. <laughs> yes. It's an amazing. It sounded like you want to say, let me edit a few parts <laughs> of the US. <laughs> Listen, Esther, I can't even spell. So it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> but another question that came through was, how should I handle it when my, my success intimidates those around me? Mm. So remember our hashtag for today is she owns her success. Mm. So this question from one of our ladies says, how should I handle it when my success intimidates those around me so that's also a very common problem and um, mm. you know because people tend to feel uh, jealous and then you tend to pretend that that didn't happen you know that your success didn't happen sure. and that makes it really mm. difficult for you <laughs> and for whoever else you're working with I, I know um, and so one of the things that I have done that has worked has been that I always acknowledge any role they may have played in helping me be successful. And it can be anything very small, you know, just like a conversation mm -hmm. or something special that they might have done. Because actually my friends have always been, they've been helpful in many ways. And, you know, you don't realize the impact of the conversations you might be having or the support you might be giving to your friends. And so they do help. And if you acknowledge that and bring them together with you in your success, then there's not the same hostility that happens. Esther, I can only imagine their responses being like, I told you I helped you. <laughs> I told you it's because of me yeah. that you are here. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No, but I hear what you're saying. It's a great diffuser, right? Like it can totally mm. put people, I guess, in their place if you yeah. want to be as blunt as saying yeah. that. I love, yeah. sorry, I love how Esther is saying, mm. you can't, <laughs> just don't pretend like your success didn't happen. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. we do, right? Yeah. Just like, mm. oh, I did make do that. Yeah. 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 You don't make your life. Yeah. 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 Apologizing yeah. for her success. Yeah. No, don't apologize. Hashtag, yeah. she owns her success. Mm. Yeah. Here's another lady that owns her success that's got a question for Esther, which is, she says, oftentimes women are seen as too emotional, too moody, too aggressive, or too difficult. But our male counterparts get away with these labels. <laughs> they don't even get labeled at all, this one says. <laughs> what are some of the tactics you've used to escape the trap? How do you reckon we respond appropriately or change this perception? So a few questions in there, bringing us back to we are seen as too emotional, moody, aggressive, difficult, but males don't get those labels. So the most important thing that people need to have today in the workplace, everybody says this, is social emotional skills. And all the employers are looking for people that get along well in the world. And part of the social emotional skill training is to have empathy, compassion, love, a sense of feeling, and men that don't have that don't succeed in the way that women can in the same role. And if you look at the countries in the world that have done the best in this COVID pandemic, you will see that their leaders are women. And so, I mean, if it's an important thing for us to all remember that compassion and empathy and some of the things that people say women are, you know, too emotional. They're, they're, they're not too emotional. It's just they understand human behavior and they're more empathetic. And so that's what we're trying to help men be. 
Um, so don't apologize for being too empathetic and too emotional and too caring. That is a great trait. Wonderful to hear. One of the quotes I heard this week was, um, you know, someone says you're too sensitive. Yeah. The opposite of, of sensitive is not brave. It's, yeah. uh, it's insensitive, yeah. you know, and, and being sensitive and empathetic, I agree with you, Esther, is probably better than all the rest. So great question. We had another one that says, it is unavoidable to shield children from the adversities that we are facing as a single parent. So this is a single parent that has written this question. She says, what can one do to turn their experience into a positive message so that the children don't get burdened emotionally? And how do you positively inspire and influence children in adversity? That's also a, another, you guys have really great questions. What a great audience. Yeah, <laughs> right. We, 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 we need like a whole day. Uh, day. <laughs> it is a whole day. So um, there is a lot of adversity in life. I mean, just like, I'm just thinking about the things that happened this weekend here in California. I mean, in addition to the pandemic, we had the fires and nobody mm -hmm. could go outside because we couldn't breathe that kind of air. And, um, you know, so we had a, there's a lot of things and people are living in small apartments and they're trapped in those apartments with their kids and so forth. So one of the things that I found that works most effectively is that you collaborate with your kid. That's part of my trick um, acronym. So you let them know that the situation is difficult but there we're going to get through this together and what can you do to help and what can you do to be part of the solution and um, you know I think one of the problems is parents try to do it themselves and just tell kids well you know just sit over there and do your own thing or whatever don't bother me now um, but kids want to be included they might be have, they have smaller bodies they're not as capable but they're really smart. And I think we underestimate the capabilities of our children, um, no matter what ethnicity or no, no matter what, they all have this innate ability to think pretty, pretty smartly. So that's what I would suggest. Collaborate with them and explain that it's difficult, but you're standing up to it. And you know, you're going to get through this anyway. This is the attitude, I mean, the alternative is pretty grim. So the attitude is you're going to do it. And most of the time you do. As a matter of fact, 95% of the time you make it through. It's just that sometimes in the midst of one of these problems, um, it's very tough for you to see. And, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles in the South Central area, which is not the best area. And my, I had to take care of my brother when he was, I was 10, he was five. And we lived in a two bedroom, a two room apartment with four people. And so I think the attitude there was, we're going to, it's going to be better. We're just going to make it through. And, um, and that was always my attitude. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to see what I can do today to make today work, but tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow will indeed be better. Some of the comments coming through saying, I love you, Esther. And Esther, if you think you love that last question, I want to ask you to do the following with me. So can you say Stella? Stella. Or Gemma. Or Gemma. Stella Ogema is the winner of our book, How to Raise Successful People like, what is by that? Esther Wittestine. <laughs> Hello, Stella Ogema. Wait, I have a question. I have a question. While we have Esther here, this is so yeah. exciting. Okay, so I've started reading your book, and I must tell you, I'm very impressed. Very impressed. Thank but you. But your, your daughters wrote the <laughs> foreword. So in it, they say... Seeing that we from the clan Wo, because we're just geek, Wo. <laughs> seeing that they're from the clan Wo, they decided that it's, it's much better for them to... So I, I want to know, whose idea was it that they write? Did you actually ask your daughters to write it? Or did they just say, Mom, you know what? This is your book. We definitely are part of it. How to raise successful people. So we're writing it. Mm -hmm. And then I also want to know, 
Um, who do you want to inspire through this book that you've created? Because in some instances, it feels like you've written it for, for, for parents, but in most instances, it feels like you've written it for people in business like all of us. So, um, first of all, on the introduction, um, they, of course, knew I was writing the book because I was busy every night writing the book. <laughs> and, and so um, they, they actually wanted to write it. Um, and so there was like a little discussion about like who was going to write what and how they were going to do it. And then one of them said, you know, it was actually fun to watch this process because they all started to dispute who did what at what time and no, it was my party. No, no, I was the one that came up with the idea with the party. Actually, it was, it was, you have to read the introduction. It's pretty funny. And then <clears throat> I posted a picture of myself. <clears throat> I, I do have this wild sense of humor. And I posted this picture of myself <laughs> with this costume that I had found at Target, which is just a big store in our area, sort of a, like a department store. And um, it was a hot dog. I put on this hot dog costume and then I took a picture of myself and then, or I had someone take a picture of me and then I posted it. And my kids thought, mom, you're in a hot dog outfit, really? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they put that they put that in the introduction, by the way, just so you know. Um, but um, so that's that's how it how that's how the whole thing um, happened with the introduction. Now, what was the second part of your question again? The second part is who do you think this book is really geared for? Is it for people in business, or are you writing it for all of us as parents? So I wrote this book actually for all different groups. So I wrote it primarily for parents because that's where I think all the bad habits start and the, your self-image starts. You know, if your parents don't respect you and trust you, you tend not to respect yourself. And so that's yes. why I started with the parents, but it really is for the business world also because the way you treat your employees, I mean, it makes or breaks the way the company performs. If they're all afraid of their project managers or afraid of their leaders, how does that empower them to be innovative? When you're afraid to make a mistake, you can't be innovative because when you're innovative, you're doing something new and you're vulnerable. So, you know, it's really important for the business world to take advantage of some of the suggestions that I've made. It will make a big difference. And, um, and then also for people just in personal relationships, um, it's really important for you to trust and respect your partner or the people that you're surrounding yourself with, your family. I think the first thing that disappears in a relationship is respect. And, you know, you don't respect them, don't respect what they say. And then the next thing that goes is trust. And then, then you start questioning them. Where were you? Why were you there for so long? And all these kinds of things. Um, so it works in all areas of our, of our life, from ch parenting, through school, through business world, and our personal life. And even for relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even for relationships. It's really, mm -hmm. I, I discuss that in the book as well. Relationships, how important it is. To, to trust and respect your partner and then to give them some independence. You know, no, we can't do things in tandem all the time. You know, everyone needs some independence. And we need to collaborate, collaborate on all these decisions. People make a lot of decisions themselves and then they don't collaborate and then they wonder why people don't want to follow their decisions. Well, if they were part of the decision-making process, they probably would. And then the last part of the acronym, which is so important, is kindness. We need kindness in this world. So important for us to be kind to each other. I mean, it doesn't cost anything to smile to people and ask how they are and see what you can do to, you know, help make their day a better day. So um, that's how I came up with the acronym. 
Esther Wachiski, you are an inspiration. Follow her on Twitter, because yes, she's on Twitter too. Uh, and make sure you get to read that book, How to Raise Successful People. There's only about 10 of us here, so we'll give you a roaring South African round of applause. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks, I do. Esther. I'm very excited to be with you, and I really love South Africa. So you should just know that um, right. my daughter Janet married a South African. Just so you know. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> Go Janet! Yeah. And when you come to South Africa, please know you've got a home at Momentum. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Remember us at Momentum. We'll come I, and have lunch with you when you come I for a visit. Love that. I would love that. I'm very, very happy cool. to be part of this. Thank, thank you. you very much. Cool. Uh, thank you, Esther. Have a good day. Oh, thank you. You too. Enjoyed your conference so much. Thank you, Esther Wachiski. Oh, uh, how amazing, so right? So beautiful. I was going to add and say, you can just come and stay at our house. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you see what I did there. So you are also... <laughs> we'll but brew the kitchen, we'll brew for ourselves. We'll <laughs> restaurant, we'll the best food. And then you're all invited. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm such a fan. What an incredible yeah, woman, yeah, right? Yeah. I, I want to end off our sisterhood discussion. Yo, I almost don't want it to end. Mm. Huh, yeah. Nonto? Because mm. it's like, when will I see you again in level two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to ask each of you to, to say something to all of our ladies who's watching. And if you've, if you've sat through this whole afternoon, what an inspirational day, right? We'd love to hear your comments. Before I get to our last message, Sarah, I'm going to start with you. What do you want to say to all of our young women, older women? Doesn't matter. Just all of our ladies listening today and watching. So, yeah, I think we need to think about the way we've been brought up to view the world. And we need to think about the people who taught us the values and the lessons um, that we've embodied. And if we find ourselves lacking or wanting in certain ways, for example, we don't believe as women we have the right to start a business or do a PhD or have a baby and take a few months off yeah. or travel and work in London for a few years. We need to start to undo that socialization and mm. just yeah, believe in ourselves mm. and not allow the way we've been taught to think about ourselves to determine mm. how we go forward. It's mm. a beautiful message. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to leave with, you know, the, the word success is so heavy, um, mm. you know, even being invited on this panel. You can't mm. like. <laughs> but anyway, um, how do you define success for yourself? Mm. And I think everyone always says it and I'm still, I still go back home and I'm still like, but how? Mm. And I think I would like to leave the ladies to say, create your own, almost like a scorecard mm. and almost write down and weigh them. So say, mm. you know, I came on a panel and I spoke, I um, submitted this and you give yourself points mm. and then that defines your next level of mm. success. And mm. I think the, the biggest focus should be wow. how do you define it for yourself, create a practical mm. key card that says, you know what, I might have failed here, but I'm still successful because I scored five for oh, actually waking that. up this morning. Yeah, that's and brilliant. so I think that that's, so cool. that's, that's mm. the way that I would like mm. to define and this journey really taught me and made me think deeply about how do I define this word for myself. Mm. And I think that's, mm. you know, try it out. Mm. <laughs> try yeah. it out. Love that. Uh, I think for me, I mean, it sounds very cliche, but self-belief all the way. Um, mm. I think, again, just growing up as a woman in South Africa, you know, transitioning into the corporate world or entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. there's a lot of self-doubt that we experience that's all instilled in us. So self-belief is so, so important. Um, and I think a big thing for me on my journey has just been very unapologetic. Like, mm. I'm not afraid to say that I'm one of the best, um, you know, magazine owners in the country. You know, mm. that I'm doing amazing sure, things, that we drop some of the best covers. So yes. I think just really, really <laughs> affirming yourself yes. and owning your success yeah. and just being very unapologetic. Mm. I think yeah. that's, you know, women don't, especially young women, don't have the space to do that. And we yeah. need to do more of that. Yeah. So um, we're message. looking for ambassadors. <laughs> 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 yeah. Follow, that's I mean. oh, yeah. Yeah. She's right in there. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Me? Nonto? Um, so I want to say that when people think about where they want to be in the next 10 years or in the next five years or even three years, it feels too far mm. to think mm. 10 years, five years, mm. three years. For me, 
think, I think and set my intention for the year. Mm -hmm. And the word helps to set my intention. Mm -hmm. And I'm a huge believer in that. And I also am a big believer that what I speak into the universe mm -hmm. manifests. Yeah. So every year I, I meditate and I go within myself and I, 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 I seek and I listen to where my path should go. And this year my word is joy. Wow. The previous year, my word was crowned. Wow. The year before that, my word was rise. Um, Maya Angelou's rise because I'd gone through a lot of stuff that knocked my confidence that mm, year. Sure. And, and I did rise. Mm. I am crowned. I am, my bucket of joy is full. Mm. But it didn't just happen. Mm. I set my intention. Mm. So set your intention a year at a time. And if you dream it, you speak it, you write it it's possible that it will mm. be achieved. Mm. Ladies, this has been amazing. Great, right? Hashtag she owns a success. It was wonderful seeing and experiencing, even if it was just a little half an hour mm. of each of you. Mm. You are gems. You are special. You are extraordinary. Mm. Hashtag you own your success. Hand in mm. your PhD. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> sorry, can I just... I forgot to say something. Mm. I want to say... You have been amazing. Yeah. Me? This yeah. is our last yeah. event. Oh. We can't queue out or finish whatever the thing is that you do. Like the end. <laughs> we can't go to the end. And on behalf of Momentum, Charlotte, I'm doing this with us. I know you're proud of me right now. I just want to say you're amazing. Mm. Yeah. We have, yeah. like, we curated this event. Every decision was a choice made intentionally. Sure. Inviting you to mm. be the one who is the main voice mm. was the best thing we did. Your heart was felt, your presence was mm. magnificent, mm. and your brain was incredible, as it's always been. So I just want to say from the whole team, we adore you and love you and respect oh. you, and thank you for lifting us up in the way that you have. Yeah. Thank oh. you. I, <laughs> I am... Give, give a hug. I am humbled. <laughs> I am not so Sorry, it's COVID, but we it's COVID. <laughs> We're both healthy. Thank God. Thank you. I love you very much. I love you too. How do you end? <laughs> <laughs> why, why do compliments make us feel so small inside it of does. our hearts? Can you feel mm. that feeling? It's fuzzy and warm and amazing. Mm. Thank you for having me. Thank you very, very much. And thank you for being my sister. Mm. Thank you. Got your ladder. Holding it mm -hmm. till the end. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kors. <laughs> and to you, own your success. Hmm? Did you see how amazing it was when they spoke about their own? Mm. And sometimes we're still a little bit unsure, right? Mm. But hashtag own your success. Because if we can believe in you, you have to, have to, have to believe in yourself. I am so emotional right now. <laughs> 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 it has been a pleasure to host on behalf of Momentum. This conversation is not over. Your business career is not over. Your entrepreneurship goals are not over. Your success within a company and who you're working with is not over. This year is not over. 2020, there's still time. Nonto said it earlier. Hashtag own your success. From all of us here, thank you so much that you could have immersed yourself in all of this. How amazing. Hashtag she owns her success. Follow us on social media. Join in the conversation. Share your pictures of you wearing your scarves and owning your success. And that's it. We are shattering barriers. <laughs> from all of us thank you once again Nonto thank you Karo Shmaro thank you Korlea thank you Rejo thank you Millie thank you Charlotte thank you thank you Blue Moon thank you thank you team thank you everybody so we did this earlier. I counted till three and we said, woo, remember? Yeah, yes. Okay, so we're going to end like that. Have a good okay. evening. One, two, three. Woo!